This video is brought to you by Dot Design Top Level Domain. Well, it's that time of the year, folks, where I look at the upcoming year and survey it for upcoming movies and shows and cartoons and specials and all that good stuff. A big old vibe check on 2022 and the animation that lies ahead of us. I did this last year, of course, for 2021, and needless to say, that was kind of weird. It was also even weirder the year before because of COVID. So many movies, so many shows that were like, wait, hold on, hold on. We don't know exactly what we're doing right now. Are we going to go to streaming? Are we going to go to our networks? Is this movie coming out this year? Who knows? Nobody knows. No, no, they don't even know right now. Nobody has an idea of what's going on. We're all, we're all clueless as we wave through the tidal waters of, of the void of, of insanity. That's, that's life. After 2019 ended, it all went into chaos. But hey, at least we can maybe watch some of these shows before we're completely consumed by the vortex. Maybe we might get Minions the Rise of Gru this year. That's what this world needs right now. More than ever. My name is Gru. I don't even sound like Gru. I sound like Borat. Yagshamash is Gru and his little corn Minions who were conveniently frozen during World War II. All right, I digress. So yes, uh, this is just my general impressions and some bullet point information of upcoming animation in 2022. Let's do it. A shout out to Ryan Walterson for curating this list. You're awesome. All right, let's start off with Disney and, and Pixar and, and 20th Century Fox and Lucasfilm and Marvel, that, that big old corporate potluck. We got the Lightyear movie coming out June 17th in theaters, and I'm sure it will show up on streaming on Disney Plus as well. Um, I'm actually excited for this. It looks fun, good action. Yes, Buzz looks like Joe from Family Guy, but who cares? I'm, I'm surprised at how excited I am for this one. I think it'll be fun. The next movie from Pixar is Turning Red, coming out March 11th. This one's original. Well, so it's Lightyear, well, kind of. But Turning Red is about like this little girl who, I say little girl, a teenage girl who's going through changes, and she turns into a giant red panda randomly. Uh, I gotta say the stylization of the characters looks fun, looks cute. Uh, the trailers on YouTube getting millions of views, so I think it's safe to say folks are looking forward to this one and count me among that. We have Strange World from Disney Animation, not just from Pixar. Comes out in November in theaters. Uh, so I don't know too much about this one. I, I saw some concept art where it's like a mushroom world. I mean, I'm getting like, vibes of like the uh interior earth like from godzilla versus kong oddly enough i'm getting some made in abyss vibes as well not in the darkness not in the violence not in how grim it is but just more of the adventurous realms to explore that go beyond human comprehension i do appreciate disney striking out in the direction of original content they did that with raya they did that with encanto i hope i said that right uh they're continuing that trend keep it up we have Disenchanted, the movie, Disenchanted, which is, I think is a sequel to Disenchantment from back in the day. It's like a live action kind of animated movie. Uh, it comes out in Disney Plus this fall. I, I don't really care. I only like the first one because James Baxter did the 2D animation and then it went live action and it kind of lost me. Not a bad film, I just, I only care about the animation. And as far as I know, James Baxter is not working on this one, so who cares? We've got Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Roderick Rules. Ooh, a sequel movie to the just released uh, at the time of recording this video, uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie on Disney Plus. Indifferent, that's how I feel. I feel indifferent. I, I hope the folks who like Diary of a Wimpy Kid that you enjoy it, but I'm indifferent. Oh, The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild comes out on Disney Plus January 28th. I watched the trailer for this. It looks like it was done on the cheaper side, as a matter of fact. And I just feel so bad for Blue Sky. It's like Disney stripped them for parts and said, Ice Age can stay, everything else can go. And that's sad to me. Again, I'm indifferent. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of like, I, I don't care. I just don't care. Ice Age has gone down the toilet. If the Chippendale Rescue Rangers movie on Disney Plus comes out this spring, uh, it's like they, <laughs> like Andy Samberg's part of this. 
Uh, my, my friend uh, AC Race Best is a big fan of Chip and Dale. He said that they've been waiting for this Rescue Rangers movie for like over a decade now. And it's like an Alvin and the Chipmunk, like in New York equivalent. So that's an, an immediate turnoff for me. I just don't know what to think. I really don't. Uh, I, I guess we'll see what happens. Ooh, the elusive Bob's Burgers movie comes out in May 27th. We'll see if that happens, right? This movie's gone through production and release hell, uh, just like a piece on a chessboard being moved all over the place. And it stinks too, because I love Bob's Burgers. It's a fun series, and I hope this movie gets a release and does well. Uh, I, at this point, I hope it doesn't become like one of those things where Disney's like, just get rid of it. Release it, and let's get this over with. Who cares if it succeeds or not? It's like, no, I hope that this thing does well. I, I like Bob's Burgers. And then the last thing here for the Disney umbrella for movies is um, Night at the Museum. I'm gonna butcher this name. Kamonra Rises Again, a, a movie on Disney Plus. Oh, yay, I don't care. I don't care about Night at the Museum. I didn't even know it had an animated portion, but whatever, maybe the merit's there and I'm just not being fair. All right, moving on to the shows. We got The Proud Family, Louder and Prouder, comes out in February on Disney Plus. I'm excited for this. I love The Proud Family, it's very good. Uh, it's good to see Oscar coming back screaming, Trudy! So I'm excited for that. It looks like they, they're bringing back everything that made it special and then also giving some polish. So here we go. We got the Baymax show this summer on Disney Plus. I'm excited. Aunt Cass is there. Need I say more? <laughs> for those who know, the, you know. Uh, I actually watched the trailer for this, as people do. Looks really good. It's one of those things where like I talked about Ice Age. I'm like, oh, it looks like it's on the cheaper end. It looks doesn't look as polished. While this one looks very well done and polished. Like... Uh, like almost shorts that came before or after the movie. So I'm excited. It looks fun. I will be wanting to watch this one. Speaking of which, Zootopia Plus has a bunch of shorts coming out. Uh, it remains to be seen what time in 2022, but I love Zootopia. Shut up. Shut up. I know what you all are thinking, but we got a bunch of shorts. It seems like it's a bunch of like separate stories that take place in Zootopia of like, here's what Dash is up to. Here's what Bonnie uh, and and the father of Judy Hopps, what's her name? Stu? Gary? I don't know. Gary right. Oldman? Uh, there's a story for them. It's like a slice of life of all these different adventures for these different characters from the movie out and about in Zootopia. Looks fun. I'm excited. Maybe it might get a series? I thought it was going to be a series, but I guess it's shorts instead? Or is that different? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Marvel's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur comes out in summer of 2020 on Disney Channel. I, I'll be real, I don't know why TV channels even try anymore. Like, they're dead. <laughs> there was like some uh, report about how viewership has dropped like 70% for most of these channels since like 2014. So like, just put it on streaming. That's what the viewership is. You're wasting your time on TV. That being said, this show looks fun. Looks cute. I like the 2D animation. I, I wanna check it out. I am Groot Shorts on Disney Plus. Okay. I'm tired of, of superheroes, to be honest. Uh, well, I say that knowing that Spider-Verse 2 is going to be great, but we'll get them when we get there. But these I Am Groot shorts, it's baby. Yeah. Yay. Crapolopus. Crapo Crapopolis or whatever. It's an NFT cartoon, you know, from, from Fox with Dan Harmon. And um, I hate it. Just NFT anything. I just, I just mix my skin crawl and, and just don't care. Cars on the Road this fall on Disney+. Plus. Owen Wilson and uh, Larry the Cable Guy doing their car shorts. Cool, I guess. I, I don't care. Just whatever. I guess I guess they did Monsters uh, at Work and they're like, let's keep it up with doing other shows from other successful Pixar properties. So Cars on the Road, there you go. Next in line, we're done with the Pixar, the Disney, the, the 20th century stuff. Next we have Universal, DreamWorks, and Illumination, parent company Comcast, you know. The Bad Guys movie comes out April 22nd in theaters. I am excited for this one. Uh, what, what cool stylization. Uh, what a fun concept of a bunch of anthro creatures robbing humans. And I watched the trailer, I like the colors, I like the lighting, I like the shading, I like the textures. It looks fun. I I'm rooting for this one. I also saw folks who were like, yeah, screw Nick Wilde. He's boring. Look at the wolf who is a, a, a world-class thief. That's our hero. <laughs> let, let the competition begin, right? Next, we have Minions, The Rise of Gru coming out July 1st. Oh, finally, after two years of waiting or so, um, whatever. It's just a big old nothing burger to me. I just don't care. 
I guess Gru's back. Steve Carell voicing Gru. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Illumination just churning out content. Next, we have Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. It's a movie coming out September 23rd. I'm tired of, of Puss in Boots. I, I just, I never really, like, cared for the spinoff films. Like, Puss was fun in Shrek with Shrek and Donkey. I don't really care about the movies, and I don't really care about this one. But then we have the one we're really waiting for. The untitled Mario movie coming out in December from Illumination. Good gracious me. What's going to happen? I'm scared. I'm scared to watch it. What's Chris Pratt going to do? Charlie Day as uh, Luigi. I'm excited for that, actually. It's going to be something where you'll have, like, Charles Martinet is, like, the voice of Mario and Luigi and Wario and a lot of the Nintendo, like, actual characters in the games. And you'll be like, I'm a Mario. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Mario. Hey, Luigi, I can talk normal now. I'm Chris Pratt. It'll probably be something stupid like that. But it's weird because I don't know if it's going to be good or bad, but it's definitely going to be an event no matter what. And I'm sure a lot of folks are going to watch it and be like, what's going to happen? Should we pray? Maybe. And then there's Supernatural Academy, a show on Peacock. For those, for the seven of the folks who are listening who have Peacock, I, I watched the trailer. It looks it looks a bit unrefined and, I, and I'm indifferent to that as well. Just... Okay, I completely forgot Peacock was even a streaming service, to be perfectly honest. Next, we have the alliance that is Warner Brothers, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, and HBO Max. It's interesting because before it was like, here's Pixar, here's Disney, here's DreamWorks. Now it's all like grouped together like factions. And I guess that's just the way it is in the streaming wars. So we have the show called We Baby Bears that's actually already out by the time of recording this video. It's on um, Cartoon Network. I believe it's on HBO Max as well. Uh, we Bear Bears had a spinoff with We Baby Bears, and it looks cute. I'll have to check it out. Smiling Friends. It was going to come out in January. It's coming out in February on Adult Swim. It's from like Michael Cusack and Psychic Pebbles from like the YouTubes. Mike Stoloska from Red Letter Media voices one of the characters, that hack fraud. And uh, cool. It's good to see Adult Swim still trying. Makes me wonder about these television networks when they're going to pivot over 100% into streaming because that's the future. We have Gremlins, Secret of Mogwai on HBO Max and Cartoon Network. I'll believe it when I see it. because I, I vividly recall bringing this one up last year and we've seen nothing. So will it come out this year? Maybe, maybe not. Scoob, Holiday Hunt is a special coming out on HBO Max in 2022. Okay. I, I, I guess Scooby is going to get a, a special Christmas special <laughs> uh, with HBO Max because folks love Scoob and I was not one of them. I thought it was below average. Tiny Toons at Luniversity is a show coming out on HBO Max and Cartoon Network. I look forward to this one. It looks fun. It, it gives me like Animaniacs reboot vibes and the Animaniacs reboot was very good. So looking forward to Tiny Toons. I watched it when I was a kid. It was very good back then. I hope it's the same case here in 2022. Bat Wheels. It's a show about Batman's uh, bat car. <laughs> Are we running out of ideas? Oh, thank God. Uh, Unicorn, Warriors Eternal from um, Gindy Tartakovsky, the god, the legend, the creator of Samurai Jack and, and Dexter's Lab and, and Primal. Um, this show looks amazing. I can't wait. Everything Gindy works on when he has creative control is gold. So this is one of my most anticipated shows for 2022. Tuned out, spring 2022 on HBO Max. It's the guy from uh, Back to the Future. Great Scott. Great Scott. What's, I forget, Christopher Lloyd? Yeah, he's like uh, talking to like old cartoon characters via Who Framed Roger Rabbit style. Okay, it looks fun, it's experimental. I'll check it out and, and it's appropriate. You know, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, it's Christopher Lloyd. Makes sense. Uh, I see you're aware enough to get the point. DC League of Super Pets. May 20th in the theaters. Uh, it's like Secret Life of Pets. No, I'm sure so many folks are like, no, it's not. But you got like Crypto, the super dog, and a bunch of other superhero pets who were fighting crime together. And and um, Warner owns DC. It makes sense they're going to keep pushing that front. We have the Battle of the Super Sons movie. Not sure when it's coming exactly, but sometime in 2022. It was announced during the DC fandom in 2021 that Warner Brothers Animation will be producing its first ever CG animated film based on a DC property with 
Battle of the Super Sons, which is like uh, the sons of Superman and Batman fighting each other. So, <laughs> just as Batman versus Superman, but with their sons. The Boondocks reboot comes out on HBO Max next year, or this year, 2022. And I'm, I'm apprehensive. The, the first few seasons of The Boondocks, top notch. But there was that one season, I think it was season four or five, I'm pretty sure it was four, where it just went downhill. Like you can just tell the writing wasn't as sharp and as good. It felt more preachy. And and uh, I don't know. I, I hope that they can recapture the magic from the original uh, first few seasons and, and be able to give it justice. Also, the voice actor for Granddad is, he passed away, unfortunately. And there's an entire weird thing with the voice acting situation for that. So remains to be seen. I'm hopeful, but I'm cautiously optimistic, you know? Teen Titans Go! and DC Superhero Girls Mayhem and the Multiverse. It's a crossover movie on Cartoon Network and, and DVD. And I like DC Superhero Girls. It's fun. I don't think a lot of folks give enough attention. And of course, Teen Titans Go! is very popular and they've done crossovers before. Seems to be a way to give some kickback of their popularity and their audience to other shows. So we'll see what happens. Should be fun, maybe. I've learned to like... <laughs> Stop worrying and love the bomb. I feel the same way with Teen Titans Go. Just stop worrying and love Teen Titans Go. And shake your booty, the booty, the booty, the booty shake. Next, we have Sony Pictures Animation. Gotta say, perhaps the Sony Animation for really turning it around. Well, kind of. We got Hotel Transylvania. Transformania comes out here on Prime Video on Amazon, January 14th. That one went through like release hell with distribution. They're like, who's giving it? Is it Netflix? Is it Amazon? Is it, are we doing this Halloween? It's January, just give it January, whatever. Hotel Transylvania is like one of the bread and butter series for Sony Animation, hence why they've made four. And yeah, it just seems like they couldn't really figure this one out. I do think the drama of like the Invisible Man, like all the folks in Tumblr are like, he's so hot, he's gonna be hot. And then he like is visible in this movie and folks are like, they ruined him, why is he ugly? <laughs> this is hilarious to me, take it. <laughs> take it, Tumblr bros, deal with it. And then of course, the um, potential magnum opus of 2022 will be Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, part one. It's a sequel to Spider-Verse. I saw the trailer, comes out on October 7th in theaters. We'll see about streaming. And, you know, what's there to say? You know, Lord Miller, God's here, just like Gendy, and they have a wonderful track record, and I'm in high hopes for this movie. I think it'll be fantastic. And I think they know how to straddle the fence of what an audience wants to see while taking inspiration from the comics in a respectful way. They know what they're doing. Can't wait. Next, we have Viacom, Nickelodeon, MTV, and Comedy Central. So like the Paramount Plus, that faction. We have the Fairly Odd Parent Show coming out in March on Paramount Plus. Good for you, Butch. I'm, gl I'm glad you're stretching this one out again. Oh, Lord, help me. I just, I don't know what to say anymore. I really don't. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie comes out in April in theaters. I'm excited for this one. Like, gotta give credit where credit is due. They were able to salvage the first film. It wasn't perfect, but enough care went in to listen to feedback, and you got to give credit where credit is due for that. And now we have the second one coming out, and they're drilling even more into the Sonic universe with other characters. I'm excited. Let's go. Let's go fast. Under the Boardwalk comes out July 22nd of theaters. Under the Boardwalk, a musical comedy that sounds like the studio's attempt at a classic Disney-style crowd pleaser. That's all I know. So a musical with Disney levels of aspiration. Not, not, not a bad goal, you know? Uh, next, we have Big Nate, a show coming out in early 2022 on Paramount+. Plus. Uh, here it says, Big Nate is an upcoming American CGI animated television series made by Nickelodeon based on the comic strip and the Big Nate book series. So it's, it's interesting to me because Nickelodeon, with their cartoons, have been in dire straits throughout the entire 2010s. They have not been able to find the same momentum as Cartoon Network or as Disney Channel. They've been very complacent with SpongeBob as their like flagship IP. And you had like the Loud House and Glitch Text, and you really haven't had that many big like properties come out of that decade. And now that the streaming wars have begun, what are you gonna do? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, they're already trying to flesh things out with SpongeBob with like the Patrick show and Apparently Sandy's getting a show and Squidward might even get a show, we'll see. But like, okay, Loud House, we'll drill into that and they absolutely are. Now it's like, you have to make original content. You have to do original content if you want to get folks to care. 
So it's up to them to do so. Big Nate seems to be an attempt in that direction. Good luck. We'll see what happens. Monster High is a show. It comes out on Nickelodeon based on the toy franchise. Okay, that's all I know. I, I've never seen any of the shows or movies from that. I think that's some YouTube series. I don't know. Oh, yes. The Untitled Transformers series on Nickelodeon. Can't wait. Can't wait for the Untitled Transformers series. Okay, here's the one thing they actually have in their corner. South Park. So South Park is on Paramount+. Plus. They got a bunch of movies and specials coming out in 2022. I watched the COVID special. It was a two-parter. I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. I, I hope they can give creative freedom to, to Trey and Matt and let them go ham. Let them go all out. Give them all the freedom and just do what they want. I, I really thought South Park would be entering the realm of what ruined or what's ruining. But the COVID special surprised me in a very good way. So we'll see where they go. They might be able to keep this going and, and go on new directions. Rise of the Team and T movie comes out on Netflix. What? Why not Paramount Plus? These streaming contracts, folks, I have no idea. But uh, Rise of the Team and T is a show I still need to watch and do a video on. It looks beautiful. Jody is a spinoff from Daria. And it's coming out on Comedy Central. And okay. You know, we're also getting a Beavis and Butthead reboot on Comedy Central and also a Ren and Stimpy reboot because these are things folks ask for, apparently. Why? I don't care. I just don't. They, they, they seem like they're just, leave them alone. Leave Beavis and Butthead alone and Ren and Stimpy in particular. I think you've learned that the hard way, Comedy Central, of bringing them back. Don't do it. Leave them alone. Do something different and new. <sighs> Whatever. Moving on. Oh, God, here we go. Netflix. I'm just going to list these off quickly because there's like a ton. There's the Army of the Dead, Lost Vegas. There's Magic the Gathering. There's a Cuphead show. Sweet. I'm looking forward to that. There's Dead End, Paranormal Park. There's Sonic Prime, a Sonic cartoon. Okay, sweet. There's the Milo Pony G5 series. Plus, I think they're getting a special as well. Looking forward to that. My Father's Dragon is coming out next year. It looks fun. I've seen some of the concept art. And I, I think that also has been second production distribution limbo. Hopefully, we'll get a release here. Uh, same thing with Escape from the Hat. We got the Pinocchio movie. I'm sure it's a movie. Guillermo del Toro's working on it. They're going to get creepy with it. You know, it's del Toro, so of course. Apollo 10, one and a half, a space age childhood. Okay, cool, you know. The Sea Beast. That one looks really pretty. Uh, and then Wendell and the Wild. This one's from Henry Selleck from the brains behind Coraline and Get Out. Meet Wendell and Wild, Keegan-Michael Key, Jordan Peele. The hellishly funny demons of a teen named Cat it is directed by Henry Selleck. It's co-written by Selleck and Peel. I'm, I'm all for this. I'm excited for this one. And then we have Intergalactic is an upcoming 2022 Netflix adult animated music television series. That's a mouthful. Based on the upcoming album of the same name by Kid Cootie. That's all I know. It's a Cootie or Cuddy. I don't even know. I'm so out of touch, folks. Apple. Ah, yes. The $3 trillion market capital company. What can they do? Oh, cool. They got two movies. Luck in February 18, and Spellbound, November 11. And they look pretty. I've seen the concept art and the posters. You know, good luck, Apple. <laughs> Apple, Apple, it's so weird as a big of a company as they are and how much they control in so many different markets. Uh, movies and shows and then video games, they, they've never really had much of a foothold. So we'll see if they can turn that around. I think they can afford it. And here at the end of our list, we've got like outside of the big corporations. Not saying these companies fielding these movies and shows and specials aren't big, but not as big as like Comcast or Apple or, or Disney and whatnot. So we have the Blazing Samurai movie. Good God. Yeah, we'll see if that happens. Uh, this thing's been stuck in production hell for a long time. Uh, you got that poster with like the sumo cat's butt. Go, go watch Rumble Taxi's video about it. Yeah, he, he's covered it extensively, and it's a bizarre story. You got a hit pig. It's like a British thing. You got a, like Peter Dinklage, and, and it's about a pig assassin trying to kill an elephant. Okay, England, good luck. Ladybug and Cat Noir Awakening. It's based on the Miraculous Ladybug series. I, I've never watched that. I, I know it on Twitter. All I know is like the fans hate the creator or something like that. I, I need to look more into that. I, I don't know enough about Miraculous and its stories. We'll see. I need to look more into it. And then you got Micronauts. It's a show coming out. Here it says, Edward Francis revealed the 
Micronauts Animated TV. The information seems kind of scattered on this one, folks. This is some Irish animation studio called Boulder Media. I've heard of them before. Uh, they're, they're working on it? We'll see, I, I guess. Uh, I guess bringing up the end of the list are the shows and movies and specials that might happen, might not happen. Kind of unsure, stuck in that production limbo. We'll see. Uh, which, speaking of which, you got Salem, uh, the secret of archive of legends, enchantments, and monsters. I think this is one that was done by, um, hey, speaking of which, that's not fair to it. It's a Kickstarter. It's organically grown, and it's like uh, some animated fantasy mystery web series. And it's uh, based on a comic by the, the creator named Sawyer, Sam Sawyer. And this was funded by Kickstarter. So no specific dates, but like Ryan Walterson mentioned it to me. I saw some of the art. Looks cute. So, you know, always got to support the underdogs and the independent creators. Good luck. And I guess probably the best way to round out this list is to mention Hasbin Hotel from Vivian Madrano. Viv, am I saying your name correctly? Shoot me in the face if I'm not. Viv released Hasbin Hotel, did gangbusters on YouTube, a massively successful pilot, and it got picked up by A24. And that was announced like a year and a half ago. And apparently it's coming out this year. And that's just so cool to me. I know there's a lot of like people holding their breath, hoping that it can make that transition from organically online made with that special oomph and, and see if it can cross into the mainstream media while still holding onto that magic, but also being able to have a larger pipeline for production and reaching more people. So Viv, good luck to you. Uh, I, I guess we'll see what happens. It's exciting. And I you know what's amazing to me is she's doing this you know, with A24 while also launching like countless episodes of Hell of a Boss. And, and that's still moving onward organically on YouTube. So uh, it's just neat to see an online creator have such a wonderful show, movie concept that it can bridge the gap into the mainstream. That's not easy. And and I, I'm rooting that it, it can be successful. So Highly anticipated for that. Overall, that's the list. I'm sure there's plenty of things that I missed. I apologize if I did. It's There's so much content. There's so much content, folks. And if I missed it, let me know in the comments. What are you all excited for in 2022? What shows? What movies? What specials? Just let me know. I'm curious. We'll see what this year holds for us. Hopefully, good things. I think we need a break. God, I think we need a break. Should I end the video on that very pessimistic note? Spider-Verse 2 will save us. Yay! It's going to be a great year. Whew. So a big shout out to this video sponsor, Dot Design Top Level Domain. The domain name register Porkbun is the premier domain extension for providing a more elegant URL option for a more civilized age. For example, instead of SaberSparkFurry.com, heh, it can be SaberSparkFurryArt.Design. Ah, has a better ring to it. Looks good on a business card. Now I feel like someone's gonna grab that domain just for laughs. Dot Design is the premier domain extension for professional and aspiring designers. From web and UX design to interior design. All kinds of designs up in here. And it's already used by many of the world's top leading brands and design studios. Though it's also a great tool for aspiring creators. Whether you're just starting out as a designer or looking for a way to improve your online presence, using Dot Design will give you a domain name that tells the world who you are and what you do right from the get go. Also, you got major brands like Spotify, Slack, Airbnb, Adobe, and Amazon who are already using Dot Design for elegant URLs. And get this you can also easily set up a website with completely free WordPress hosting. This dot design bundle from Portbun has everything you need to launch your professional website, which is an important investment for securing your professional footprint online. Branding is the name of the game, and it will sound so much better than .net or .com. But dot design? Ooh, that sounds good. So go hit up my link in the description down below and get yourself a graceful domain name through dot design. Go check it out today. <laughs>